But first, it's my pleasure and honor to sit down with someone I respect so much, Local 12 News reporter Rich Jaffe. He's retiring today, and we're going to look at some of his weather-related stories as he gets ready to wrap up the career here at Local 12. <laughs> Been a few of those. I'm so proud that I've gotten to work with you the last couple of years here, Rich. Well, actually, it's that we sit next to each other. I know. He's, <laughs> we're we're next-door neighbors out in the newsroom. Our desks are right next to each other. How are you feeling today? Uh, it's a little strange. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's a... Uh, you know, it's it's not so much closing a book on a career, but mm. just opening a new chapter. Mm -hmm. And uh, life is going to be full. Life, I, life I'm excited be for you and your your beautiful wife, Belinda, because you guys are young and healthy and vibrant, and you get to have some time together, which you, you know, you've worked really hard for how many years? Yeah. More than we want to say? Well, <laughs> uh, if you total them all up, both tours of duty here, it's uh, 30 years just at Channel 12. Fantastic. But it uh, started a long time before that, actually, back like 1975. Well, we're going to look at uh, some video from the Moscow tornado. And one of the things that you've really done over the years is you've given a voice to people who, who wouldn't have had a voice. And, and covering disasters is one of the major parts of your career here at Local 12. Um, tell me what it was like that day out in Moscow when you showed up after the tornado. Oh, it was brutal. Um, Ed Burkholder and I, my photographer, uh, we parked, geez, I don't know, about three quarters of a mile away. We hiked in mm -hmm. and it, it was literally, you hear it all the time, it looked like a war zone. It was. People staggering down the streets. I remember one picture vividly of this guy carrying a, a bassinet. Just with coming down 52 with his baby in it. Oh. And uh, there, right, right there. That guy. Unbelievable. And uh, then we walked right on in into to what there was of town, and uh, it was it was amazing. I mean, you know, we've seen a lot of destruction. I know you have, and and how you know, as a reporter, I think a lot of people wonder how do you get through things like that, mm. and <laughs> and uh, you know, how do you deal with it to bring a good story to people you know who are watching? You try and process it. Mm -hmm. And then it's all about the, it's always all about the people. You just, you try and, and in, intrude in their lives without intruding. And you, you ask, as I always say to them, do me a favor. And they say, what? I say, help me tell my story. And, and the answer then is, well, what do you need? Just talk to me. Yeah. And that's, that's well, I've said that for almost four decades. And another thing that you've done over your career, it, it, not just helping people in that way, but also uh, helping viewers learn things, like your Get Out Alive series. I think we have some, <laughs> some video of you emerging oh, no. from ice no, the, in your Get Out Alive. Yeah, I mean, look at yeah, you. Ice rescues. What, yeah. So why did you do that? <clears throat> because uh, we have people every year who fall through ice. And uh, I had the, the honor of working with Loveland Sims uh, and Task Force One. And we did a whole bunch of stuff. We, we showed people how to get out of cars if they go into the water. <laughs> we did that 20 some years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, this ice rescue was the last one. We talked about uh, doing this training for years and then the weather just didn't cooperate. Sometimes it was uh, worse than <laughs> we yeah. wanted. But um, it, it, it's stuff really that, that I was always curious about. That, that's kind of my barometer. That's a good reporter. If, if you can uh, bring something to viewers that they're curious about and ask their questions for them, I think everyone would agree that's one of the things that's made you a great reporter. And we're going to share more stories with Rich coming up. Uh, John Lomax is going to interview him here a little oh bit on Good Morning Cincinnati. Uh, John Gum a little earlier said you taught him how to shoot shotguns, Rich. <laughs> <It was a laughs> day. Did you ever want to do weather? You could go over there with John right now if you wanted to. Uh, Here's yeah, your chance. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we took some of your time, John. Sorry. That's okay. Rich can have all my time. Believe me. Uh, we're definitely going to miss Rich. That is for certain. Let's take a look. I love him so much we brought him back. Our very own Rich Jaffe has brought you countless stories over the years as an investigative reporter. Here at Local 12, uh, today is his last day with us. Uh, you're so kind to reach out on Facebook about that. Uh, and we invited uh, Rich into the studio to talk about uh, everything from his investigative pieces to stories about helping those who are in need. And, uh, and Rich, uh, uh, people don't realize just how difficult it can be to do some of the investigative pieces as you've done in pouring over the documents and that sort of thing. And one case that comes to mind immediately uh, or recently is the Beck case, <laughs> State Representative Peter Beck. You know, that, uh, the nice thing about that was it, it came to some degree as quite a surprise because one of the lead plaintiffs in the case, one of the investors who had been defrauded by uh, then one of the most powerful Republicans in the in state, um, 
He came to us because I had done a story 20 years before that on what was labeled a cult by the Attorney General. Uh, and that's one of the places where the, the money from the investors was going. Yeah. And uh, Beck uh, just, uh, he maintained that he had nothing to do with any of it all the way through. In fact, when he threw himself on the sword in the interview with me, the only one he did, um, he actually claimed that he was one of one of the victims in all of this, and as it was, he's now doing four years in prison. Yeah, it takes a, a certain amount of determination to go through all of the records, uh, to go back to all of the previous interviews, to connect the dots. Uh, it, what is it that you've enjoyed so much about that? <laughs> the chase. The chase, <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you end up, in the course of investigative stuff especially, you, you go into it, you start listening to the pieces of it, and at some point it starts to make sense. And then you have to prove, oh boy, that's an Look old one. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But then you talk about the chase. This is a, a chase. It was not a long investigative piece, but it was a long story of a period of time helping people who couldn't uh, help Wesleyan, themselves. Yeah. Wesleyan Cemetery over in Northside. Covered it for 12 years. And, yep. and we finally got some good things done there and got the place looking better than it ever had. Yeah. Yeah, but once again, that had to do with being persistent and determined and doing what was right for people. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's what we do. One of my mentors, Bob Steele at the Pointer Institute, said yeah. our job is to give voice to the voiceless. Yeah. And so often that's exactly what, what we should be doing and what I tried. And sometimes people don't really have loud voices when they need help. I'm thinking about uh, the elderly woman who lived up in Mount Auburn in a home that was overgrown. <laughs> And I mean, you went yeah. up and you did a story and you got, got some people to try to help out. Yeah, I, I found her house simply because I couldn't find her house. It was, <laughs> it was so overgrown. There yeah. she is. She, yeah. She's just a doll, a great yeah. lady. And uh, she was just overwhelmed with the conditions there. And, and we managed to get her some help and uh, get some things turned around at her place. It was, uh, it was a, an interesting moment. Yeah, has it sunk in yet the kind of impact that you've had? Uh, Occasionally, you know, uh, there are a lot of tears, oh, yeah. a lot of hugs, yeah. and uh, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe the, the biggest measure of the career is the amount of faith and trust that I have earned from people and agencies out there, yeah. and uh, that means a lot. Uh, you also earned a lot of love, and we're going to talk about that right now, because we ask people uh, uh -oh. Because you are retiring, to go to our local 12 Facebook page, they share the, uh, uh, their thoughts, their favorite memories, some, uh, just some kind words for Rich. Jen Dalton's been tracking that. She has some of those responses. Well, let me just say your hat plays a big part in people's <laughs> <laughs> So uh, let's start with this first one, which you are going to okay. treasure. Bob, you're going to love this too. Joe says, can't narrow it down to just one memory. He's a real man's man that will be missed but not <laughs> forgot. I made him a meme oh, that boy. says it all. Oh, what do you call a man without a mustache? <laughs> a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. That was nice. Tanya says, I am sorry to hear Rich is leaving during all the crazy weather we have had through the years. I'll miss his big burly coat and the big cowboy hats and boots. You can oh. tell he was uh, dressing warm. Just one of the guys. He would get her done type of guy, but he will be missed by all the local 12 viewers. Michael says, Rich is a man's kind of man. I always admire his adventurous style, his love for the outdoors, and the way he digs into a story that has that positive changes for people who can't defend themselves. He will be missed, but I wish him well. Marlene says, I pray that he has the same attitude towards retirement as he did towards his reporting full throttle. <laughs> retirement is bittersweet. Hope you are awesome, Rich. Let's do one more quickly. Denise says, you will be missed. Thank you for reporting for all of us in Cincinnati. We also are glad that you could stop by, or uh, you could st stand up probably for us <laughs> little guys and helping out the needy. May God bless you. And whatever you proceed to do, I will never forget you. I will miss you in your cowboy hat and your winter hat, too. Happy retirement. Uh, the Local 12 cast will miss you as well. I wanted to find <laughs> mustaches for all of you. Oh, I, I, I got to grow one. I got to grow one. Little bigger. boys at this desk. I didn't get time to go to the Halloween store and get mad. I got to grow my own bigger there, Rich. Uh, I'll come back. <laughs> okay. Disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's, we're going to miss you so much. I, I, can't, I can't even tell you. And I, uh, the thing about this guy, too, we all, he's this, he's this hard-nosed guy, and he goes... Oh, You've said it before. Got that, goo got that gooey center about him now. He's got that gooey middle about him, man. He's, he's, super, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he's super caring and sweet, believe yes, us. He is. Yeah. Yes, he is. And Rich, you know, you're authentic. That's the best compliment I can give you. You're authentic. You're the same dude that I met, you know, 25 years ago. 
and you're the same on air and off air. And I wish you nothing but but the best. Thank you guys. And yeah. you can always come back and see us. I will. Absolutely. And bring the band. Promise. And bring the I'll bring the band. I'll bring the guitar. Okay. If I can carry the piano, I'll bring that. <laughs> okay. And I will definitely bring a hat. And bring us some fish for the grill. That too. Oh yeah. yeah all right. Well, let's go see John. He can buy us to your house down on the Gulf Coast too. Good morning, Cincinnati party.